Hello and welcome to another episode of Our Own Devices. Uh, we are again going to talk a lot about AI in this episode. And to talk about it, we have none other than Dr. Rohini Srivatsa, who is the Chief Technology Officer of Microsoft India and South Asia. Uh, yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Yeah, so so again, AI has been the buzzword in this podcast as it's been everywhere else. Uh, we have had we have, we have spoken a lot about you know different aspects of AI, uh, you know responsible AI, all of it. But but you know one thing a lot of people want to know about is how AI helps them in work, and this is where Microsoft has done a lot of work, especially with Copilot. So so how do you you know how do you look at Copilot? You no, know, is it again the big question that's hanging around everybody's head is is it going to replace my job or is it going to really you know superpower what I do? Well, that's a great question, and I think it's a it's a good way to uh, to start the conversation. Um, one, if you just step back, I think the uh, approach that Microsoft has taken on AI is uh, is to really have three pronged approach. Um, uh, it's about meaningful innovation. It's about empowering people, and it's about responsibility. You mentioned that we've talked about, a lot about responsible AI. But I think the other, the first two pillars is where um, I would respond to the question that you asked about co-pilots. The idea of a co-pilot at its very fundamental level is to be exactly that, to exactly be a pilot, a co-pilot to any worker, any human being, any uh, um, uh, any student, healthcare worker, etc., uh, and be that intelligent partner. Uh, which is the idea of a co-pilot. Now, I think there are two ways to think about it. When you look at uh, the ability to um, bridge, whether it is a talent gap, whether it is a gap in terms of, uh, if you go down particular um, industries, like let's say healthcare, the ability to have augmented intelligence, which is the which is a good way to think about co-pilots, the ability to have augmented intelligence in the hand of uh, healthcare workers uh, in remote areas to uh, help them um, provide that primary care or even diagnostic services, for example, uh, that then can both have access to health as well as uh, reduce the burden on um, on expert uh, on, on uh, uh, specialists, etc. Uh, same thing if you look at uh, education. Um, teachers are burdened with creating lesson plans, creating interesting content for their students. Uh, and many times, especially in government schools, there are teachers who are uh, uh, looking at classes that, in fact, from our different skill levels. Uh, so one of the things, for example, that we have done is something called a Shiksha co-pilot. The idea is that can a teacher have a co-pilot to help create lesson plans and interesting approaches, for example, lab experiments or uh, uh, or, or uh, activities to do to engage with the content. Now, coming coming to the point about um, about workers, yes, of course, um, what we are seeing is that um, that uh, the the idea of a co-pilot in work, in fact, is. Uh, is is very highly um, appreciated. In fact, our recent uh, future of work uh, and and work trend index report uh, talks about the fact that um, the that employees are um, very much looking to adopt um, uh, AI and co pilots uh, to improve their productivity, their creativity, um, and I think the ability to provide that kind of uh, uh, assistance uh, is where, where the idea of co-pilot lies. And uh, so, uh, so is this like, you know, um, I remember a conversation from many years ago saying that, uh, you know, AI, uh, AI is almost like electricity, you know, when it was found two years ago. Uh, it's 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 really going to come into everything we do and i keep using this line in the podcast but but you know i guess that sort of wraps up the kind of potential this new technology exactly uh, it's not exactly new technology but this technology has right now now how uh, how do you think a worker or 
or anybody for that matter uh, has the potential to use it do you think you know we still need to make people aware or even this technology need to evolve to that extent where it becomes easy for everybody to use it literally in everything they do so one of the it's exactly i think one of the big uh, uh, paradigm shifts that's happened with generative ai is the accessibility of ai because now you are able to engage with the uh, with the intelligence with ai in natural language and increasingly in voice uh, in fact uh, now there is what we call multimodality which means ai is able to see you are able to talk to it and uh, and uh, audio etc so i think the that barrier to engage with ai is uh, is one important uh, element that has been addressed in the recent developments in ai now having said that the ability for um, for workers across uh, across domains to use ai is a skill that has to be developed and uh, and one of the things that microsoft is uh, is heavily doing is to ensure that people are getting skilled towards the uh, towards this new age of uh, of ai uh, through multiple approaches um, whether it is the uh, the recent announcements that we made in terms of uh, skilling workers uh, uh, using um, uh, using ai whether it is in in terms of uh, security, etc., uh, skilling project that we have had. So I think the point about, uh, of course, the the need for skilling definitely is uh, is important. But the ability to uh, create a co-pilot that engages in uh, in natural language definitely reduces the barrier to to using AI, and that is coming true in uh, whether you use um, Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft Modern Work, uh, um, you know, uh, tools. In fact, if you think about things like GitHub Copilot, which is uh, which is a tool that a developer can use, uh, you are actually able to even even professionals like lawyers or or uh, or or other professions which which are not necessarily uh, you know hands on coders, they are able to um, uh, you know really get into. Uh, into creating um, applications because that uh, that barrier to using AI has uh, has significantly gone down. And and on the other hand, you know, would it be right to say that AI is also taking away a lot of barriers? Right. For instance, you can you can literally have a conversation with data. You really don't need to visualize it. You don't you know it is not necessary for you to find. The kind of you know cuts and slices that you know which would you know which would mean that you need to have understanding of formulas and all, but uh, you know because this generative AI and a natural language ability helps anybody to access anything, right? Yes, but I think one needs to uh, peel the onion a little bit. Uh, the what AI does is reduce the barrier between insights and therefore driving action by a domain expert so for example if a uh, if a salesperson is trying to look at data to understand uh, what territory what uh, um, uh, practices on the field are working well that but potentially could be adopted by other areas uh, those are something that the the human has the best intuition and best understanding for what AI is helping to do is to minimize the gap of finding those insights in data. So, which is where it goes back to this idea of the co-pilot, uh, wherein the uh, and, and you see data is uh, is exploding uh, and will continue to. So, how does one draw value from that data? Uh, is where the the power of uh, co-pilot comes in. So to answer your question, I think the ability for humans to drive th drive insights, action, strategy will continue to be empowered by leveraging data, which is where AI comes in to remove to to create that uh, that uh, bridge uh, in a much more natural interface and uh, uh, and and accessibility. And and how uh, so uh, if you. If you're looking at companies, you know, powered by Copilot, and maybe based on their own data, uh, how important is it to have, you know, the governance that, uh, you know, uh, 
that has to be has to be sort of built into this right like because everybody can't have access to every uh, uh, everybody can't have access to every data point for instance um, and and you also open up maybe some security and privacy issues so so how do you how do you build in that layer into um, into the uh, uh, how do you build in that layer into um, into copilot for instance great question so i think look um, the whether ai or not the concepts of trust of security of data governance are are are, are concepts or are, rather are that are uh, um, uh, fundamental principles in which um, microsoft believes in and every organization has to uphold at the end of the day any enterprises large or small their internal ip their data is uh, is their uh, uh, their differentiator their intellectual property now the way in which ai plays a role is to have that intelligence layer on top of it but that inherits intent uh, inherently i mean it in inherits the uh, the governance as well as privacy uh, 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 rules etc from the enterprise itself so i think the important thing to realize is that even when you are using ai for example if you are using microsoft 365 copilot you as a user have access to only information that you would have without the ai so okay. the ability to then have ai as an as a layer that makes that friction go away and the natural lang language interface i just spoke about and be able to access uh, you know millions of 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 documents potentially and get what you need that friction is removed which is where go is goes back to being that copilot to help you be more productive more uh, creative but that doesn't change in any way the fundamental uh, precepts of uh, of of privacy of security of data governance and uh, and when you are uh, deploying ai does it uh, you know automatically customize to that that use case or that company or that user uh, you know because uh, it should be something that comes you know natively for ai right because it's learning on that set right so look i think in the past the sort of pre generative ai world the yeah. mental model was to uh, develop models for your data so you would actually create a model uh, um, an ai model machine learning model for your data that fundamental uh, paradigm shift uh, is where the generative ai is different uh, because it is what is called a pre trained model what you do is you ground the pre-trained model, meaning you tell the pre-trained model to uh, tell is in quotes, obviously, but you get the pre-trained model to give you answers based on your data. That doesn't mean that you are creating a new model. You are just saying, yeah. for example, that you know it's like an exam. It's like an exam. You would say, you know, answer only based on this syllabus. Yeah. So that ability uh, is where uh, the difference comes in because you're not telling the model learn using this data, but you're telling the model tell me the answers, but restrict your answers to this information I have given you. Now, uh, if we can come to the Indian context a little bit, you know, how are you seeing Indian companies, uh, you know, use Copilot and and AI in general? You know, are you seeing use cases where we have, you know, we often have out of India, you know. You know, very particular, you know, ways of using a new technology because we are solving, you know, problems that are unique to us. But that, in the end, gets something and becomes something that can be maybe deployed in other parts of the world also. Absolutely. So I think one we have to realize that India is indeed, uh, as Nandan Ilikani has put it, the use case capital of the world. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we are, you know, we are indeed in a uh, in a in a diverse, complex, uh, and uh, and a high growth society uh, where we are seeing the adoption of AI across sectors. Um, if I go at, for example, the uh, the banking financial services sector, 
you know, companies like uh, like Access Bank, they are looking at AI first strategy and have uh, integrated Copilot with for Microsoft 365, uh, resulting in a 30% increase in their work task productivity. On the other hand, if you look at manufacturing industry, uh, somebody like LNT Construction uh, is using uh, uh, something called Asset Insight that they have created, which is again powered by um, uh, Microsoft Azure IoT and AI technologies to provide real-time insights from equipment data, from operational efficiency, equipment productivity, etc. Then on the other side, you look at things uh, sectors such as uh, such as uh, agriculture where um, uh, ITC has created something called Krishi Mitra, which is based on, again, Microsoft Copilot templates to help farmers uh, uh, understand and respond to, uh, to inquiries uh, in, in terms of voice and regional languages and get personalized guidance. Now, of course, the India is also a startup capital of the world. Um, and uh, companies like Inmobi, like Zomato, are indeed pushing the boundaries of using AI, whether it is for uh, operations, providing better customer experience, uh, or reducing the burden of routine uh, legal tasks, for example. So we are seeing it across the board. I think India is uh, uh, is indeed a hotbed of innovation for AI. And uh, just like we have seen in the world of uh, uh, digital public infrastructure, I do expect that some of these use cases from India will become uh, become role models for the world. And the fact that India is so diverse, especially when you look at uh, it from the prism of languages, is that a challenge or is it an opportunity? I think it is. Uh, in fact, I would say AI is a moment to really celebrate India's diversity because uh, the the ability for uh, for um, uh, uh, projects like Bhashini, which are uh, language models, uh, gets completely um, amplified when you combine it with with generative AI. So, for example, uh, the bot Jugal Bandi, um, which was uh, demonstrated by our CEO last year, and he, in fact, he he's he's so impressed by it that he continues to talk about it more than a year later. Uh, it was a was an amazing um, demonstration of innovation at 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 a, at a dramatic speed by combining a use case that is uh, so relevant to india and uh, a big part of uh, of the developing world the global south uh, that combines the, the combination of uh, of a generative ai model and languages uh, and provide the access to information, provide access to services um, using using uh, the the farmers in this case native language, and that uh, that use case is uh, is transferable to to many sectors, whether it is citizen services, whether it is legal or or healthcare, you name it, right? So I think the ability for for languages uh, to celebrate India's languages, this is quite a unique moment. Now, having said that, clearly there are there is uh, work happening in India, which is uh, which is building large language models, uh, which are native using Indian language, which also is uh, is is a is a uh, effort that uh, Microsoft is working with with startups that are developing um, Indic language uh, models. Having said that, there is so much happening in this space uh, of with innovation that it's important to uh, both develop language models but also move at a, at a pace to leverage what is developed um, and create use cases and put them to, to create impact, to create value. Because as this area is also ev uh, evolving, instead of large language models, there's a lot now happening on small language models. Which are uh, which can be deployed on a phone, for example, which can be which can which are a lot lighter in terms of both compute as well as latency, uh, and so the pace of innovation is only improving. And I think to going back to your point about languages, the ability to uh, to innovate with uh, with the, some of these small language models and uh, the examples we just talked about and add the Indian language capabilities like Bhashini I, I spoke about, the value, the, the path to value is, uh, is, is so fast that we that India needs to ensure that we capture this AI moment. And, uh, you know, I can, I can say with a bit of pride that, like, you know, in our show, we have had a lot of women, you know, 
leaders in tech but i missed asking them asking this question you know how does your view of the tech world of your company everything change when you know uh, in comparison to having uh, having a man in your position so is there is there a very different view that you get a, a very inclusive view when you do it this way it's a great question you know i've been in the world of tech for more than 3 decades in fact my journey in ai uh started way back when i was in graduate school working on neural networks before it was uh, you know so, so mainstream and i think i if i reflect back on uh, on my journey and i look at uh, women across the world my, within microsoft uh, externally my peers uh, in the industry in indian, uh, indian uh, uh, tech industry i think few things i can uh, i can say with some confidence i think women when they come to technology uh for for some inherent reasons take a very responsible view of technology you yeah. would find women uh, approach the technology from from the very beginning with issues of inclusion of ethics of responsibility and that is to me a huge strength because at the end of the day you want to deploy a technology uh, that will be uh, uh, beneficial because it is beneficial in so many ways that we discussed for example we talked about education we talked about healthcare agriculture it is so beneficial that we re- definitely need to embrace it and we need to do it in a way that is improving the lives of the common person it is creating inclusion access to knowledge access to opportunities and somehow women do that quite naturally that's been one observation uh having said that you know coming to much more practical points look uh if india has to become uh one of one of the largest world economies in the world uh india does need to ensure that women across every sector need to participate in the economic uh, growth uh and if every sector is going to be uh driven by tech by ai then women do need to play a, play a role in tech and ai in every sector um and it is a good thing that uh that uh, as i said earlier that the perspectives that women bring uh to res- to ai is from design principles itself um uh, uh, looking at issues of collaboration of adaptation of biases of equity uh, and and that's that to me is is a is a very is, is a sign of uh, uh, you know great hope for the technology and and the economy overall so on that wonderful note dr rohini srivatsa thank you for being on the show thank you very much thank you for having me and thank you for the conversation So you were listening to our own devices. We'll be back again next week with another guest, lot more wonderful insight. Till then, we are available everywhere you listen to our podcast.